are looking forward to a hot, sunshiny day because we have been all huddled up in winter clothing and we were not prepared for winter conditions. So let's see how the day goes. But we're heading now to a campsite called Full Moose Fontaine. And we've got to do the Abraham's Knee Four Wheel Drive Trail. I uh, have chosen that particularly because it's my surname. Um, but <laughs> it should be interesting. The Tracks for Africa guides on the Garmin say uh, do not attempt when after rain. There hasn't been hectic rain. The guys at the reception seem to be pretty like, oh yeah, cool, go ahead and do that. Um, so <laughs> hopefully it's not too crazy. But um, yeah, it should be a nice drive today. If we've got beautiful sunlight and uh, warm up a little bit, get in the shorts, get in the pluckies, <laughs> and uh, just make the most of the day, it'll be really nice. This whole series is made possible by the power of Red Ark and in part by Bush Tech Canopies, Terrain Tamer and Easy On. We ran our batteries quite low yesterday. Um, I'd left the inverter on by mistake and it actually wasn't charging anything. And we've been trying to push to keep our freezer at minus 12, minus 15 um, most of the time because we're really using it as a deep freeze for a lot of our meat and stuff like that. So it puts a lot of strain on the battery system. But I must say the Red Ox system has been keeping us topped up so beautifully. Like now we've already gone up 20% and we haven't even been on the road for an hour. We've just been kind of, you know, warming up for the day and we're already back at 66%. I think we dropped to 46%, something like that. And I can see it's charging at 32 amps at the moment. So it is really, really hauling. Um, so when we get to our campsites where we're sitting for a couple days, we put out the solar panel just to help supplement. But really when we're just doing these like one day stops, you don't really need the solar. The Manager 30 keeps it charged so well. Uh, it's, it's actually quite amazing. We're getting to camp every single day with 100% battery, especially when you pair up the Manager 30 with something like a lithium battery. It's a fantastic combination because the lithium batteries are just so hungry for power. So it'll charge at 30 amps just flat out until it's full. Very, very impressive. So nice to be able to manage and kind of track everything on the Red Vision app as well because we are running the Red Vision vehicle management system on our Red Arc system there. So I can monitor everything that's happening on the vehicle via Bluetooth from my phone. I can actually go in and I can even use the switches, turn on lights, turn on USB sockets, water pumps, uh, the fridge, all of that stuff right from my phone while either I'm driving or I'm around at camp. So I must say it's been a really amazing system to have on the, on the trip and I must be honest, it's been flawless so far. I've been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. I think we've been driving for about seven or eight k's now and the landscape has completely changed. This looks like we're in <laughs> Namibia <laughs> with the grass and the hills and the big sky. Even though this landscape looks desolate, it is full of life. Loads of little plants and insects and birds. But driving through this little landscape here really makes me feel like we're somewhere far off. It does not feel like we are just a couple hours away from Cape Town. It's actually magical. 
What the Tangwa Karoo lacks in Big Five, it makes up for in bucket loads with a sense of freedom and truly is something worth experiencing. It also hosts six different vegetation types throughout the park and in a day of driving, you can experience pretty much all of them. So we can go up here to Roy Flay, and we can have a look here, and then we can go down that way. I think Leuburg was one of the trails. Oh, he said it's one directional. So we have to either go all the way up, then start Leuburg, and then come down, and then go that way. So maybe what we'll do is we'll keep going straight, because it's still quite early, we're at 10.30. So let's go ahead, we'll go all the way to here, and we'll start this Leuburg four-wheel drive trail. We'll come back down, and we'll come back to our campsite. The park has a couple of 4x4 trails. Most are too badly damaged by water to attempt at the moment. But Leuburg was set in our sights. And with a couple of hours to kill, we head out not knowing what to expect. Something else. So we've gone on to another planet. So I wasn't expecting the 4x4 trail to start so quickly. Next thing you know, wheels up in the air and rocks everywhere. But I gotta get myself in the zone. <laughs> you know, when you're in that like kind of nice relaxed touring mindset and then boom, all of a sudden you're on a four-wheel drive track. I think what's really nice is there's places to come and test out your four-wheel driving, there's places to come and test out your suspension, you know, there's places to come and test out your wild camping setups, and really camp with no facilities, no ablutions, no nothing. I think it's a good litmus test for going further up, but this stands there, you know, on its own. It's very, very impressive, and I didn't know this was all hiding here. We climbed and climbed until it almost felt as if we were on the top of the world. I don't know if you can hear me, it's pretty windy, but this is really cool. All around us, it's just beautiful scenery. Have a look. This is amazing. And this is just the beginning of the trail. It looks like we're heading to the big mountain over there. But this is absolutely top notch. This is seriously steep. The view out of the front windscreen would change from gravel to blue skies with every descent and ascent. With the most amazing panoramic views on either side of us, it really felt like we were driving on the back of some massive mythical beast. As we began the climb of the last rise, the pinnacle of the Liuberg Trail, and perhaps even the pinnacle of our time in the Tanqua, looking over the vast landscapes where we have been and where we have yet to explore, this is sure to be a spot I will never forget. But all things come to an end, and now it was time for our descent all the way down into the Roy Flay below. This is where we would see the extent of the water damage, because the roads had turned into dry riverbeds and most have been washed away. So we've just come down the mountain and we're in like a riverbed system. And um, obviously 
Riverbed systems are dangerous. You can't follow your GPS too much because um, obviously rivers change and the roads change and stuff all the time. But at the same time, you don't want to just follow tracks in front of you because you don't know if those lead anywhere positive or not. Like here, there's literally the GPS says go this way and then tracks say go that way. So I'm going to try and stick with the GPS and see you know how far it goes. But in this case, they've had a lot of water and stuff, so it'll probably be best to follow the tracks. Um, but we're going to see and how see how it goes. I'd like to see how accurately I can actually follow the GPS. So yeah, we managed to get our way out. There were times where we lost the track, but because it kind of kept with us very accurately, we could actually see where the track is and just make sure that we're following tracks that kind of match it. But in this case, that road ended up completely being washed away. So we at least could then use the Garmin route to just say, okay, we're heading in the right direction. And as long as we, you know, take a safe path, we've now joined back into the main road here and um, all is well. what that's for. And there's another building over here. Oh, it's so creepy! Oh, that's definitely got things living in it, Andy. I was gonna say, maybe you could sleep in there, but <laughs> you might wake up with a friend. Chains. You might wake up with 10 uh, friends. Chains. chains. <laughs> Let's check this little crawl. Maybe you can set up in the crawl. <laughs> and you know what's nice? It looks like nice level ground for you. There's only about 10 rocks per square inch. So the crawl seems to be made of purely rocks. So that's probably not going to work. Okay, well, uh, that's it then, I guess. ourselves a nice cup of coffee we can now sit down relax enjoy our campsite a little bit here it's a bit rough around the edges but so are we so uh, we'll uh, make the most of it So this is our quaint little campsite here. This obviously used to be a little farm, there's a little crawl over there. That's a little house, it's got a little kitchen and an oven and all sorts of things in there. Andy set up his tent inside one of the rooms. 
I'm using it as a big windbreak. We've been done our dinner and everything there. We warmed up some leftovers from a couple days ago and ate it with our nice bread that we made yesterday. But very, very nice. I've honestly been so impressed by Tankwa. It's been a fantastic spot. But it looks like there is rain in the distance. So I'm gonna have to pull the camera in and start packing up everything. The rain ended up clearing and giving us a beautiful sky to enjoy our last night in the Tankwa Karoo National Park. This is the first time in a while that we have woken up to no clouds, wind that's not that bad, and sunshine. Oh, what a glorious feeling. <laughs> There's nothing like taking things away that you take for granted to make you appreciate them. Today we leave the Tankwa Karoo. We make our way to, well, not really greener pastures, but probably windier pastures. We're heading to a place called Star Wars Village this morning which is in New Oatville. I'm a total Star Wars nerd, so I'm absolutely excited to stay at the Darth Vader camp. Oh, the spring bar. Oh. We said goodbye to Tankwa, got back on the R355 and drove to Calfinia, where we stocked up on some basics before heading to camp. Star Wars Village was the perfect spot for us to catch up on some essential chores. I was down to my last pair of underpants and a nice hot shower sounded like an absolute treat. It was really a quaint little spot with only a few campsites and I'm sure would be an incredible spectacle during the Namakwa flower season. It's a unique and fun spot that I will certainly be back to in the future. While we're here, we would also be meeting up with Nikki from Terrain Tamer and his son Andrew, who came through to check on the suspension and re talk some nuts and bolts in preparation for the next phase of the journey. They would be visiting some clients nearby and join up with us again at a later stage once we head into Namakwa land. So we've had a nice little rest here at the Star Wars village um, just outside Newitville. We resupplied yesterday in Calfinia just to get some stuff. We need to resupply again in Van Reinsdorf. They didn't really have too much stuff there for us. Um, but we're gonna be beginning our journey the west coast now so actually we're heading to the I guess the northern west coast but we're gonna be heading into the Namakwa land coastal national park today we're gonna to actually be camping at a place called Kurung Kohol Bai or something like that and we're gonna be there for three days just there by the sea setting up put the solar panels out and just chill out and take a bit of a relax get bored go for a walk figure things out while we're there so it's been nice to stay here. We've had running water, warm water. We've managed to do our laundry. We've managed to refresh ourselves. We're having a bit of a breakfast now. So we'll start there in Grunrefir and we'll make our way up the west coast there and it's going to be beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of Rome Overlanding. I really hope you enjoyed it and we'd love to hear what you think down in the comments below. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And I will see you on the next adventure. Cheers.